thank you for joining me. We have just arrived at Herm Island. We've just come over on this little boat from Guernsey. Couldn't dock at the main harbour due to the tide. Here. The main harbour's over there. Everyone else is now boarding, so I'm going to make my way out of here, up those steps, and we're going to go and explore the island of Herm. A moment ago, we were just down there at those steps. The ferry's already gone back. All those people that were queuing on the steps got on really quickly and went. That island there, it's, I think it's pronounced Jetu. It's spelled J-E-T-H-O-U. And then over there, that's Guernsey and St. Peter's Port. This, I think, is a typical road on Herm. There's no cars or anything here, possibly horses. It's a very small island. Um, and I've never been here before, so I'm really excited about exploring. We've already made a couple of videos in Jersey, so now we're going to, I expect I'll make at least one when I'm on Guernsey, and then this is our exploration of Herm. So here we have to look out there. What a really nice beach. We're gonna go and find the harbor where the boats would usually dock, and then when we get there, we'll go inland, we'll find the little village and see what there is to see. My plan is also to walk to the other side of the island and around the cliff tops. It's private in there, so um, it's just like a, another world to me. I've never really, I've been to Iona, I've never actually made a video there, but I have been to Iona. It, um, size wise, it's probably about the same size as that, but it doesn't really remind me of it. So I'm gonna continue down here. I'm gonna go and find the harbor. This little building here is Herm Prison. It's very small, but then Herm's a small island, so um, they probably don't need a great deal of prison cells. And I expect if you do something really bad, you go over to Guernsey, because I believe there is a prison there. Now, one thing I'm really excited to discover, railways of the Channel Island. Well, I think Alden is the most famous uh, island for having a railway, which I'm not actually gonna visit on this trip. I haven't got time. I went to the Pallet Steam Motor and General Museum in Jersey where we did see some steam locomotives. But as for Herm being one of the smallest islands, it might surprise you to find, to discover it once had a railway. And here we have a flint fit track and a crane. This crane used to be the one piece of rolling stock. We'll go and have a look because the old railway line is still there. But this crane, it was built in Leeds and it was it would have just been moved up and down. I don't know if it was no one seems to know if there was ever any steam locomotives here. It looks like it was probably pushed up and down, maybe pulled up and down by horses. You can see the works plate on it. It's um, heavily sort of painted over, but there you go. So built in Leeds, and here it is on the plips. This is probably slightly off its original bit of track, but it's really nice to see. It's actually got a wooden frame with um, a metal sort of structure to hold the crane on. So we have an item of rolling stock, railway rolling stock here on Herm. I want to know what the gauge is. I've heard it's some weird gauge, it's not standard gauge. I'm gonna try and measure it with my feet. I should have bought a tape measure. So that's one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot. I would say, now my feet are probably a bit bigger than feet. It's getting on for five foot. So I reckon it's um, it's not quite standard gauge or it may be slightly bigger than standard gauge. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to research this one afterwards and what I'll do, it's coming on screen now what the gauge supposedly is because I found that one out. Um, now let's go and have a look at the railway itself. It's gonna get really windy now, so I'll try and shout over the wind. Have a look, there's this vehicle here, this, um, this uh, forklift truck, which is not on rails, but it's parked on the railway. So there, the track is just there, it runs along here. So you can clearly see a rail here, hold railway rail and then it runs along here and it runs all around past where these um, these water valves are so I'm now walking on the old railway through here out into the harbour so its purpose was to transport granite out from the quarries out onto boats the tide's out now hence um, why there's no water, so that would have transported both um, the granite out to boats because home granite was supposed to be very good. Now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to head inland and we're going to go up to the village centre, which is up there somewhere. I'll now come inland from the harbour, heading up this rather steep hill up to Manor Village where there's a church and plan is to make way to the bottom of the island, all around the other side. Now, got a choice of two routes, I can either continue 
up the steep hill or I can go through the valley gardens. And it also says the Zen garden, so that sounds quite nice and it says via the woodland walk. So let's have a explore up here. Always like exploring gardens. So I'm seeing this for the first time as I show you, so not too sure what we'll see. I wonder if um, there's quite an exciting looking path going off up there. I wonder if that's the way up. Oh, there's a waterfall here with a uh, small pond. I thought they were there if you want to go paddling, but I won't. I did in Jersey the other day, St. Bernard's Bay, went in the sea. Oh, what's up here? This looks like the remains of an old quarry now. This is exciting. It looks almost like a sort of like a Japanese garden, the Zen garden. This is very pleasant. There we go. It's a cute little bridge. I won't go over it. I think maybe the sounds have a stream coming down here. So this is the Zen. This is the Zen garden. What I'm going to do now, I think the way up to the Manor Village is, is going to be up that path we passed. Um, yeah, that's not a proper footpath there. See the eucalyptus trees? You do see them on mainland England, but it does have a sort of exotic feeling here. See different plants you wouldn't normally see. There's that nice pond again. I can't see any fish in it. I see fish in the harbour at Guernsey is where you departed. I'm going to go up here now. Very excited to see the centre of the island. Its um, first impressions are just like somewhere so different to where I've been you know there's no cars there's a few quad bikes and kabotas driving around but you know no real big vehicles no coaches no taxis I haven't even seen any cyclists just walkers and I haven't seen any horses for that matter I know they have a lot of them on site so we're continuing up here I'm gonna have to follow this path see where it ends up that's the road we were on a moment ago down there so let's see where this path takes us all very exciting though because it's new i know i can't go too far because the island isn't that big so i'm just going to explore it's interesting look there's a plant here that's called badger's broom it's an indication not badger's broom bushes broom sorry i haven't seen any badgers it's an indication that this is an ancient woodland um so it provides a nice bit of shade this woodland on a day like today i'm going to follow the path and let's go and find the manor village So I've made it to the top of the hill and I'm now on a dusty road. Every time one of those quad bikes comes along, um, it kicks up all the dust, so it gets quite dusty and feels like I'm um, you know, out in the desert somewhere. Now we come to this little bell tower. There's a, a chapel here, it's called St Tungle's Chapel. There used to be a monastery on Sark, and this was established as like a little hermitage, um, like a monastic cell. This, this feels very French, this scene. I, went, I stayed at a monastery in France a few years ago, and um, it reminds me a bit, this scene here of it. So what we're going to do, we're going to go and have a look at St Tungle's Chapel and we'll have a look inside. It's very pleasant. It's, it's just nice to go inside and get away from the hot outside. So we're coming to here. This is the little churchyard. There's Jesus Christ. Go down here. So you've got your nice little churchyard here. There's the little, we go to it? The little bell tower. Um, yeah, you can actually go up to it. I'm not going to ring the bell, but there we go. You don't often actually go into the bell tower. So if I was to pull that, the bell would ring, but I don't want to confuse people and start ringing the bell. That's the little chapel behind us. So it was like a, a bit like a miniature monastery in a way. And to my knowledge, it is the only church now on Herm. So let's go in and have a look. You can see there have been other buildings coming out here. So it's like remains of a wall. So we go into here. Unusual. Okay. So you kind of got the amenities here, and then also a bit more of the chapel around here. So I don't know how often they. I don't know how often they have services here. I'd quite like to come to one just because it seems novel to be on this very small island. I had a look in the church this morning in St Peter's Port in Guernsey, and that was just like your typical sort of town church, a bit like the sort of church you'd expect to find in the West Country, but this is really quite different. You might get a little, you know, sort of um, fisherman's chapel down by the coast a bit like this, perhaps in the West Country or in Wales, but I've never seen anything quite like this. So here we have, this is St Tungle's Church. 
And um, that's interesting. Now, is that someone... Yeah, someone's actually ringing the bell, which I just said I wasn't going to do. But anyway, you know what the bell sounds like. Let's go and continue exploring Herm now. Well, I'll just come along the street a bit from the little chapel. There's these buildings here. These are holiday cottages with a very, very nice view out across. So that's Guernsey over there, St Peter's Port. We're now coming to the northern part of the island. It's getting a bit windy here. So what happens, the road continues around here, and the road that goes down there to about where you can see the trees, there's, then beyond that, it's just pretty much only sand dunes. So my plan is to go to that point and then turn right and head over to the east coast of the island. We know it's east because we had a look in the chapel and the chapel faced east, and I know from looking at the map. So I head over to the east coast of the island, and there's a couple of cafes on the east coast. Oh, another interesting thing. There's Herm Fire Station, so if there is a fire on Herm, that's where the fire engines live. So, oh, that's the power station, that's cool. So that must be a diesel power station. That is really, always like power stations. You may have remember I did a video a while back where I explored Kirkwall, capital of Orkney, much, much bigger than this, and we saw a power station there, a diesel power station, much bigger. And here we have, just coming along, one of the, um, it's not the boat of it, you know what I mean. So you see a lot of these vehicles driving around Herm and kicking the dust up. So Herm Fire Station, Herm Power Station. Now let's follow this lovely looking lane down to the sea. So I'm continuing along this road. It's called the Spine Road for fairly obvious reasons because it forms the spine of the island. There's a path going off up there, I wonder where that goes. Anyway, I'm going to follow the Spine Road. It's opening out now. In the last shot we can see some trees down at the bottom we kind of come past them and well get a view open so oh, that's interesting now quite a lot of people i know when they do the walk i'm doing they don't go want to go up the hill i wanted to see the chapel so they go along the southern or not southern shore the um the western shore of the island so they would have come along there so hence why you can see quite a lot of people so i've hardly seen anyone the way i've come along but a lot of people go this way so then they'll probably all end up at the cafe where I'm heading for. So I could continue north, I could go up that hill. I'm not going to, I want, I've only got three hours here. So my plan is to get to the cafe, which will be over around the corner a bit. Continue round the cliff paths, and then I'll end up back at those steps where we started. So as I get to here, it's funny how it's suddenly become really busy, but just busy with people no sign of any motor vehicles at all. I'm going to head, it's going to get really windy now, I'm going to head right across over there until I find this cafe. So as I've been walking around the island, I've been looking for a cafe. The path gets sandier and I think, yeah, the cafe is literally on the beach. Here we have a beach uh, with people swimming and enjoying the sand. And yeah, here we are, here we have the little cafe. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over there, I think I'm going to get myself an ice cream. I just had a very pleasant ice cream down at the beach cafe just down there. You may be able to hear various people sort of screaming and cheering while they were having a sack race. So that was a bit of an unusual thing to come across on a beach. Looking out there, there's a few boats out on the bay. The path now should be quite different. I was just talking to some walkers who went the other way and they said that it's more like um, up and down, like, um, like we'd expect from a, close, a coastal cliff path. So it's going to be quite different to what we came, the route we came, you know, via inland. I think it'll be a lot quieter. Not so many people took the spine road. Most people took the other path around the other side of the island. Right over there, that is Sark. There's lots of, um, lots of rocks and a few, a few um, lighthouses. I can just about see Aldeney over there. And right in the very distance, the camera's probably not picking it out, but I can see France. So, and somewhere over there, um, on the way to Jersey, I could quite clearly see Flamanville Nuclear Power Station. I could see the two original domes, which house pressurised water reactors commissioned in the 1980s. And I could see on the left, the new reactor, which is under construction. I'll insert a picture of that now. So that's uh, Flamanville Nuclear Power Station. And that does also supply the Channel Islands with quite a lot of their power. As we saw, there is a power station here. There's La Colette power station on Jersey. I expect there is one on Guernsey as well. And no doubt it's pretty something on Sark, but a lot of power does come over from France. 
and follow the path now and see what, what we find. Looking down on one of Sark's many little coves, we continue our walk around. We're now around the northern end of the island, up on the cliffs here. It's a completely different character to what we saw at the southern end of the island, where it was all sand dunes. We're on a proper cliff path. You can see across to Sark over there. You can see a big ferry, Condor ferry crossing. That's probably on a job from Portsmouth or Poole via the Channel Islands, probably to St. Malo in France. So there's lots of different ferries you can get that go in and out all these islands. I came over from St. Peter's Port in Guernsey. The island ahead of us, what looks like it's part of the same island, but that hill ahead is on Jetu, which we saw at the beginning. So we've pretty much circumnavigated the island, although we did kind of cut through the middle of the island. So I'm now coming to the end. We'll just see one last bit when we get round the corner, we should see the steps and then we'll have done the full circle. Well, we've almost made it now, we're just coming round the final curve and it'll take us full circle. There's a, one of the boats coming in, it's probably the one I came over on, just coming in from St Peter's Port, which we can now see over there. It's quite interesting seeing the ways they come in and out the rocks. So the one's just gone, it's gone that way through the rocks around Jetu, this one's come this way. I'll have to try and get to Jetu one day, I don't know if you can. I thought there's a little pier, but it's a smaller island than Herm. The steps I mentioned are just a little bit further round. So um, we've now seen all the views, all three, four sides around the island. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And from the cliffs at Herm, looking across to St. Peter's Port, goodbye.